Hi, it's Matthew here from Katoomba Camera House, and I've got Anthony here from Film and Video Extras here to show us what the effects of different filters are, and he's going to answer a lot of the common questions that we get um, in the store about how filters work. No worries, thanks, Matt. Thanks. Okay, the company I work for, FE, or Film and Video Extras, we're actually the Australian importer of the Marumi brand filters, which are still made in Japan, so they're very high quality filter. Now the, the first filter we want to talk about is the UV, or its proper name, the ultraviolet filter, which is one that you put on your camera and leave on the camera all the time. It's this very good general purpose lens, uh, general purpose filter, to help cut back on that harsh ultraviolet light and help give your photos a little bit more of a natural colour. Now these filters come in two different grades. There is a standard filter, a multi-coated filter, and then there is also a newer one which we have which is called the digital high grade filter. I don't know if that's showing up well, but here we go. Now the multi-coat filter, as it says, does have layers or well, coatings on the filter to enhance its optical performance. Whereas the digital high grade filter is, has a lower profile in comparison to a standard filter. The edge of the glass has been painted black to stop any reflecting that your sensor might pick up. And the higher grade and higher quality of coating on the glass again, just to help give better colours and still keep your images nice and sharp. Another feature of the digital high grade, having that lower profile on the edge, is also a benefit for the landscape photographer doing using wide angle lenses, because the lower the depth, the less chance there is going to be a vignetting in the photo. Now, the two different grades, they will work on any lens as such, uh, but the digital high grade filter is a more expensive filter and it's generally put on a more expensive lens. If you spend a lot of money on a good lens, you don't you really want to have the better quality glass on the front of it. Now I did say before about having these filters on the camera and you would put them on and leave them on. But one of the main reasons for that is these do these do get used as a protective filter to protect the front element of your lens as well. So that in have this happen to a filter which you can then screw off and replace straight away as opposed to having to throw a whole expensive lens out if it accidentally gets dumped, dropped or bumped into something. The next filter I want to talk to you about is the second most common filter that people buy and that's the circular polarizer. Now it's been a favorite for photograph landscape photographers for years. It's the filter that gives you the real deep blue skies when you're out in your landscape scenes and also your seascape as well. Now another use for it that not many people realize is it can also be used to take reflections out of glass. So if you're trying to take photos out of a, a car window or out of a building and you've got those horrible reflections, you just give the filter a little bit of a spin and it can cut back on that quite dramatically as well as overall helping to give the colours in your, all your images a real good punchy, vibrant feel. The next filter I want to talk about is the neutral density filter. Now this was one that will cut down light coming into your lens, allowing you to extend your shutter speeds. Now it comes in three strengths, there's a neutral density 2, a neutral density 4 and a neutral density 8. Now basically a neutral density 2 cuts the available light down by one stop, a neutral density 4 cuts it down by two stops and a neutral density 8 cuts the light down by four stops. Now if you've ever seen any of the photos taken of a waterfall where all the, the water is like a smooth finish, it's not the frozen droplets, this is the filter that the photographer has used to capture that effect. It just stops the light coming in, especially if it's bright in the middle of the day when you're trying to take the photo, and that allows you to get those really long shutter speeds to get those beautiful effects. Okay, and continuing on from the neutral density filter, there's a new filter that's just been released here in Australia. It's actually a variable neutral density filter. In appearance, it looks a lot like your circular polarizer with the rotating front element, but you can actually vary the, the effect of the neutral density, in this case from ND2 to ND400, which will give you a, a difference of nine stops. And again, you just put this on the front, rotate it around until you get the effect that you're after, and then take your photo. But one of the things from experience that a lot of people would do, they always start with the 
compose their photo, frame it on the ND2, switch the camera lens over to manual focus, and then adjust the filter to the intensity that they're after. Because once it gets up to its maximum, it gets very black. You can't see through the, the lens and what you're doing. Just a little tip for you. Now all those filters that I just spoke to you about are available in the normal multi-coat as well as the digital high grade with the exception of the neutral density variable. Because it's such a high technical filter, it's only available in the digital high grade. Now the Marumi filters are a high quality Japanese made filter. Made, the elements are still made of glass, the rings are all made out of metal and they use the highest quality coating available that is, that is currently available on the market. Well there you have it, I hope that sums up and helps you out with some of the most commonly asked questions on the differences between the filters that are available on the market currently. Thank you.